Previously on Kill on Earth. Next! Next, let's move it along. Now, two hours before the Chad Ralph Ritchie show, the list was kind of just a cluster. If you're not invited, don't come to this line. Do you have a CV assignment for this section? We didn't have the but Zena told us to sit here. They said that you put them there. No, I did. Okay. Of course, they're going to say that. Okay. This is bad. Great, you got to study an evasion. There are a lot of unhappy people. That's a really important brand for us to work with. If this is going to be about me being fired for something beyond my control, then let's just wrap professionally. I get fired. Ridiculous. I have so much. No, I know. And a phone call is not that hard. I was supposed to do the scheduling of all the interns, so I didn't mess that up. Please stop. Please, I you can't do this. You don't have time. Just go sit down. Yes, I will take care of it. I had to like walk away because I was like getting so mad and frustrated. And I just ran out of patience. I'm done with her. We should be, yeah. Not we should be, our way. Yes, we are. The fashion director at Interview Magazine is coming. Okay. Do you want New York One to cover as Jean Provocateur? Yeah. Your whole life when you're working fashion is you're never done. It's like a joke. There's no sleeping in. You have to work. There's no rest for the wicked. What's going on? Have all the hotel invitations, like, are they all ready to be delivered? Are they all in bags? Where are the seating charts? Have they been brought in yet? We're going to need a really big-ass piece of foam core board for the Agent Provocateur girls. September Fashion Week is just a really crazy process, and it can be very stressful. We're doing preparation on the Asian Provocateur show. It's a brand that is very important to us. And we're doing a walkthrough. What are you doing a walkthrough for? For Nicholas Petru. At the same time, we're trying to get ready for Nicholas Petru. Who is a menswear designer just launching a collection for the first time. It's the invite for the Patricia. Looks really good. We're all too busy. We're short staffed. We're doing a million things. Today's Thursday? Yeah. No way. It is? Oh my god. Who's got the camera? Julia. Okay. We've been asked to produce a fashion show for our client, Agent Provocateur, which is the hippest, cheekiest, sauciest lingerie company in the world. We need to do casting, and we're looking for eight great girls who are thin but not bony. Right now, does anybody have any issue with nipples, boobies, bras, or your ass? Because if you do it, this is the wrong casting to be at. <laughs> Yeah. Agent Provocateur wanted to have the best possible event for the least amount of money, which is very typical in the fashion business. So when you work in that way, you have a lot of limitations. Normally, a fashion show costs sixty dollars to $80,000, which includes all the production elements, the lighting, the organization of backstage, the renting of props, dealing with champagne and food. But for this fashion show, the budget was much smaller than what we normally work with for every show. Watch your face. Let me just... Okay. Uh, just turn around. It's specific. So the show is going to be very much like people sitting on couches, like old school, like modeling. Like, this is Isabelle. She's wearing the great Gatsby panty with the, uh, you look lovely, Isabelle. Smile a little bit. We're trying to sell underwear and not beat someone up. Thank you. Russian, more American. <laughs> Less red, more blue, baby, more blue. It's our job to cast the models, and, you know, you have to find girls that are going to be wearing uh, nothing, basically. And most models are so skinny. It's like Auschwitz, you know, you're like, oh, my God. I mean, not even the fashion industry thinks that's sexy with underwear, okay? Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, cute. Oh, that's a strange face. She's perfect. Yeah, she's great. Maybe if God could bring us 20 more of her. Yeah. Is this the only casting we're having? It's not. Um, I mean, yes, it's, uh, we're going to need to do a lot more castings than this. God. We need to get three. We need eight. Well, we need to do another round of calls. Okay. I am casting for Agent Provocateur. You have any young girls? Yeah, they're doing a show. But Drew said that you guys had no one to send, and I find that hard to believe. 
All right, let me know what's going on. Bye. Okay. Well, first of all, this is being sold as a presentation, not a show. And I think that's part of the problem. Oh. FYI. It's really a show, even though we're calling it a presentation. I'm sorry. I, when he said I... Julia, who works for Ajahn Provocateur, when she called all the model agencies, she had said that it was more of a presentation than a, a full runway show. Because it's kind of a cross in between the two. Listen, I, I think I'm having a bit of a problem. No, I, but it is a runway show. I mean, it's when you say presentation to booking agents, it means that the girls are going to stand in lingerie for, you know, a number of hours. And so a lot of times it's harder to book really amazing girls in that way. Okay, thanks. I just spoke to the owner of the top agency who's going to send some people yeah. over. Thank you so much. Well, it's first option and then book. I'll leave to know, but I I'll can call them back. I'll just call them. Everything's going to be fine. Never done a fashion show without enough models. So. handling the menswear presentation for a new designer called Nicholas Petru, which was sort of a favor that was brought on last minute. They're really cool. I love them. We had not previously known this particular designer, and he had budget issues, but we did agree that we would help him with the production and, and the press. Oh my god, this is so amazing. You're going to get a lot of attention for this after we're right? but I'm just going to send an image from New York Times. I'm a sucker for the avant-garde, you know? I'm not pretty pretty like i don't want to see a lot of flower dresses that, that's not my shoes you know but i found his collection they're not for everybody and that's fine the good news is you're gonna get a load of editorial with this collection I don't, yeah. the bad news is people are gonna think you're making unwearable clothing so what you have to do for your sales is i would pull these pieces out mm -hmm. so this is very wearable yeah these are very wearable everything's super wearable. but yeah. i get that what i think yeah. you should do is take four mannequins mm -hmm. dress them in your top four outfits, outfits Put the remaining jumpsuits separately, small, on a rack, mm -hmm. and then merchandise the rest with the wearable clothes. So it would be like, here are your clothing racks, and then mannequin, 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 mannequin. Frames the story, and then all your wearable stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, I see what you're saying. I, I, wouldn't you think that somebody who's educated in clothing, they would like say, you know what, this is very wearable. Yeah, but you know, well, some people say, it, yeah, but you're going to get a live celebration, and a lot of people are going, what the is that? You yeah, know, because exactly. you're going to get no, an extreme. I'm not in that. But... You have to say, okay, what? why are we here now? We're here to sell clothes. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of experience. And I've been doing this for over 22 years, and I know how to get attention and build a brand. It's great. I'm excited. Yeah. You should be really proud of yourself. Thank it's you. really genius. You got to do what I say, though. My priority is getting his Petru invites out that need to get out. Yeah, like, I'm... I'll kill somebody. For the Nicholas Petru show, we had to send the invitations out, contact the press in advance, because our main focus when we're doing the PR for a show is to get press people there. Please get everything that needs to go in the mail needs to go to the mailbox now. The yeah. magazine, interview magazine, now yeah. magazine, yeah. all the main publications. I want to know exactly how many stamps we have. Stephanie Voorhees was put in charge of our first round of invitations. But she has made so many mistakes prior to this that I just hope that it doesn't affect the outcome of the event. Okay, so I have 120 invites that can go out. And which invites are they going to be? These are all publications. These are all going to be hand delivered in the morning. This is a disaster. The names are doubles and triples, every single one of them. Um, are these repeats? Yeah, these are all repeats. Murder somebody. It was my job to pick, you know, the most important people to receive the first invites. It seems like it's common sense, but I had never done it before. And when I was looking at the invitations, I realized that quadruples were printed and triplets with the same names. It was just a huge disaster. Like, nothing is organized. Like, everything had to be reprinted. There's so many duplicates. Like, it's so upset. I, I'm so upset. This is not right. Wait, shh. Everything. See, I need all the press came in. Everything is tonight. So tonight, we'll just worry about getting them in order, taking out all the doubles, and tomorrow, we'll just brush them off. I mean, touch Emily. Huh? I'm not the one this here. I just, I can't do this anymore. I can't. Like, I'm drowning. There was just too much to do. Everything was just so poorly organized. It was such a disaster. Like, I was exhausted and overwhelmed. This yeah. is so disorganized. So people working on this whole breakdown about everything being a mess. I do kind of resent her for that because, really, if she had done it right in the first place, it wouldn't have been an issue. 
what are you doing? Come here, just come here for one second. I don't know, there's some incompetence going on around here that I, I've never had any of these problems before. Like, I don't get it. I'm going to put some pajamas on. I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to be doing. I just want to be comfortable for like three hours. And when I would go and ask Emily for help, I just felt like the door was always slammed in my face. I think everyone but Emily likes me. But there's only 120 stamps and there's like way more than 120. If you can't figure out who the 120 most important people are, then maybe you shouldn't work here. I just had a really hard time respecting Stephanie Voorhees. I mean, it's not brain surgery. It's really not that difficult. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to call Nicholas just because he, I mean, he spent so much money on this invitation. There's no way with our intern staff and, you know, having all these shows Wait, and events. what are you guys doing? Okay. I, you guys are scaring the out of me. Okay. I'll break it down right. for you. No, I don't, I don't want it broken down. I want to know what's going on and I'll break it down for you guys. Okay, fine. So, Nicholas Petrillo, we're putting on a show, obviously. He can't give us? Duh. Okay. He gave us these beautiful invitations yesterday. Duh. All right, we got it. Okay, okay. I don't need the whole soap opera wind up. I know what's okay, going right. on. Okay, Basically, so what's the deal? I'm the boss. I give you the paycheck. You're supposed to give me work. That's how it goes. And if you're not up to the job, then you should come to me and say, you know, I'm really getting paid X amount of dollars, and I think I should give you some of your money back because I don't know what I'm doing. Hand me the piles, and then I'm going to figure out what we're going to do. Here. Here. And if you can't put a stamp on an envelope and make sure that it's mailed, I mean, please. We can all go out tomorrow. But we can drive. I've taken over the job. All right, I'll get it organized. I don't need to take it over too much. But right thanks for the sentiment, but I don't really have a choice because I think I'm the only person here that has the experience on the I can get it sorted out. Benjamin Sergio, call him. Sultang, Elizabeth Anton. What is going on? I'm calling him. This is embarrassing. I'm sorry. I take responsibility. I know I can't make a mistake like that. Okay. Have we heard from the, um, this club? Yeah. We booked the Arts Club in Manhattan, which is a private club for the Ajahn Provocateur event. Okay, they decided to cancel yesterday afternoon. Bye. Nonchalantly by email. Oh, really? Well, I'm going to send a six foot five hitman over there to go visit him. <laughs> We made a three-hour tour, hearing about all this history and about how great friends we were going to be, and we air-kissed 700 million thousand people, and somehow we lost his face. What is going on? Who are these people who does that? Some kind of wackadoo flip of a bitch happens, and we're stuck before an event with no place to go. You know what? Page six. Forget it. Page six. That's for punks. How about page six foot tall? With a gun in my pocket. That's a lot more interesting. It's fashion, of course. Somebody's gonna do something you over. It's just part of your daily life. So now where are we going? We need a space. So over this bull. Alright, let's go. <laughs> We're going. I'll be back. New York City where the girls are mean but oh so pretty. That's my rat. During Fashion Week, when you're working 16 or 18 hours, sometimes it's just good to go out for a stroll. I always take Ava, and we will go out and take a walk around the neighborhood. It's one of my favorite things. Oh, that looks like Coco. Yeah. We used to have an Affin Pincher. Really? Yeah. You say hi? Yeah. What's her name? <laughs> Coco. Oh, that was our dog's name. Where did you get her? Rescue from Staten Island. That is our dog. Were you from Staten Island? No, but we had to give the dog away to a nanny in Staten Island. The woman who... Her in Staten Island got pregnant and was afraid she couldn't take care yeah, of her. No. I swear to God, that's our dog. I can tell you. I cannot tell you how freaked out I am. We had had a dog, this Affin Pincher. I spent, mm, I guess, $2,400 on the dog, and then we gave Coco to the daughter of my friend's nanny. Coco, you're so cute. I'm so happy for you. You did good. Coco ended up put up for adoption and was adopted by two lesbian painters in a really big, beautiful loft and now lives four blocks away from me in Tribeca. That is whack. I do. Bye, Coco! Bye! Bye! See you later! Oh my god! <laughs> that was insane! Hello? It's Robin from People's Revolution. We'll just find out who's here for my show. Yeah. Intern! I need to send someone up to uh, the New York Post. Yeah, this is Andrew calling in Kelly Catron's office. I'm going to show you to see Nicholas K. Oh, my God. He's so busy.
Stephanie Voorhees was asked to work on a press release for Nicholas Petru. And the first thing that I noticed was that the designer's name is spelled incorrectly. I'm sorry, it's my fault, it was a mistake. I'm really sorry. Oh my god. His name is spelled N-I-C-O-L-A-S, which now I can remember. But I had spelled it N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S in one part of the press release. I know details are important, but I made a mistake. I mean, it happens. But wouldn't you have thought to check the document before you sent it? I'm sorry. I really, I just I don't know what else to say. I can take responsibility. I know I can't make a mistake like that. I'm just retarded. I'm calling him. This is embarrassing. But it wouldn't, you just can't make mistakes like that. It's it's the, the spelling of the designer's name. 100% if it's sent out to a client, it needs to be spelled correctly or else you look like a total idiot. Is he upset? Yes. I mean, I would be. Can you just say that they're working like 14, 16 hours a day and then she just said the wrong thing? Okay, where is the Nicholas Petru press release with correctly spelled name well, in a PDF? Really... Okay, oh, okay. I see. <laughs> and I'm going to check it. I'm sorry. I really am, but I can't take it back and I won't have it again. Okay. <laughs> preparing for the editors and everyone that's going to be there. Do you guys have something to be able to curtain off this room so that it's like backstage area? I felt a little nervous because it is not something that we like to do in terms of taking out a designer that's totally brand new that nobody's ever heard of. Are you familiar with what you're wearing and everything? You're probably going to be in that the whole time, so try not to drink too much because if you have to pee, it's going to be a really big problem. Every model that was going to be in the show was going to be wearing a head-to-toe body sock. It covers the model's faces, it covers their head, they can barely see, you know, I'm assuming they can breathe under there. If I was a model, I would never want to be in that thing. I mean, it, I'm sure it was very uncomfortable. Oh, really? Yeah. It was very avant-garde. It was definitely something that maybe a more commercial publication might not understand. <laughs> oh, don't need to go anywhere, mister. Yeah. The young kid he couldn't see. He was so cute. Those boys are all so cute. They're so, like, little. <laughs> Well done. I think you're going to take your shirt off. No, 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 no. They're all like skater dudes, you know? You Nobody know, really thinks that mo male models are straight. They're almost all straight. And a lot of them are just really cute young surfer kids who were like hanging out somewhere and somebody came up to them. I'm an scout. I was like, dude, you know, you can make like, you know, a thousand bucks a day. And they're like, really? <laughs> they're sweet. No. Okay. That's why I'm there. You know, I'm there to make sure that, you know, 19-year-old beautiful boys don't get eyelashes stuck in their eyes. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow. Okay. Life is so cruel. Why do I have to be 44 and work with, like, these hot guys who are, like, 21 who are so beautiful and so innocent that they're just like, you know, Mommy, will you please help me take this? It's like, God, I'm too well-behaved. Okay? So, basically, we were supposed to be doing our event at the club. And they emailed us to say, unfortunately, they're not able to do our event. And they won't even call us back and give us a reason why it's the most bizarre thing. Kelly put me in touch with the owner of the Soho Grounds as another possible event space for the Ajahn Provocateur fashion show. Ajahn Provocateur is really specific in what it is they were looking for. They're looking for a space. It's like the Carla, you know, that whole kind of old world vibe with like the chandeliers and everything like that. Would it be possible for us to come down? Okay. Okay, thank you. Until I confirm space, I can't start dealing with the seating, all the production elements. I had never felt more like helpless and stressed. Why are you so defensive, bitch? I don't think he should be so upfront. I think he should be on the other side. Who's placing these guys? We should have a stronger oh, that's she has to okay. okay. A lot of times clients want to have presentations because they can't really afford a fashion show. We'll be introducing you to people. It's to stay close so that you don't miss your show. It's just now I want to make sure that everything looks perfect. Okay. Um, and also, you guys, just so you know, if a photographer wants you to step down, 
to shoot. This is going to be the shooting area. I'll, I'll try to be here with you the whole time, but it would be right here, okay? Okay, yeah, we're going to open. The press is coming in. And, okay, we should be letting people in now. Hi, how are you? For this particular designer, our job was to contact people in advance, you know, really do a big push to try to ensure that key people are in attendance and that there's photographers there and you know, the production rolls smoothly. Where is he from? L Magazine. Which one? Uh, not the Okay. Hola. Hola. If you have a good review, that's very, very important and can make or break somebody's career. It's going to be right through here. Thanks, Teresa and Esquire. for a sec. It's Nicholas's birthday today. Hey, stop saying it to everybody that. I want to do an extra train on that, yeah? Yeah, it's uh, Let me hit a video with you, okay? Thank you, Shimbu, Nicholas Pichu. Hi, how are you? This is, uh, this is uh, what we call bubble wrap. It looks like that. Right, yes, yes. As far as the press that were there, he had great press there. He had almost every important men's magazine. This is V Magazine. I think you should meet him. Shelly Marks. It's Nicholas Petru. This is Nicholas Petru, the designer. Nick's from okay. Esquire Magazine. Yeah. Some people appreciated it, but some of them thought it was a complete and utter joke. I mean, GQ can almost wet their pants. They were laughing so hard at his collection. What can I say? I can't make them live it. Do designers, hands down, get great reviews from everybody? No, they don't. The Japanese people liked it. Should we go talk with Jean? No. No? She didn't get it? I don't like her. She's the men's designer sportswear editor. Yeah, so patronizing. Uh oh. I had invited one of the editors from Women's Wear Daily Men's to come to the event, and she kindly came and spoke to the designer. But apparently their interaction did not go well. I'm not going to change my vision, vision to please the men's wear fashion editor of anything. She is your, your editor, though. I know, but what can I do? I'm just Women's Wear Daily. He was a bit cocky, and I mean, usually, if you have a review in Women's Wear Daily, you should be very happy. I said, yeah, maybe the styling is a little bit more European, you know, feeling, and she yeah. asked me, yeah, I know, I go to Europe. I'm like, why are you so defensive, bitch? I'm the one with the master's degree from St. Martin's, not you. I'm the one who had a store on Madison Avenue, not you. So, you know, I must be doing something right. I think he made a humongous mistake being rude to the editor from Women's Wear Daily Men's. If you want to be a legitimate designer in the industry, you need to respect Women's Wear Daily. And he showed absolute disrespect for her, at which point I realized that this is probably somebody that we don't want to work with. I already sent her the images yesterday, and that coverage was great. We need to be paid. No, just, Nicholas, I've been doing this for a long time. People totally f*** us over it. We had writers from AOL. We had Gap Japan. We had a lot of good press people there. You know, the fact that some of the people didn't show up is normal. Not every, you're a brand new brand. I personally emailed every single key person in the industry. Well, you have f***ed us over. You're jeopardizing our company by not paying us the balance of the fee which is owed. I called Nicholas himself to ask for the check. We had an agreement. Then he started nitpicking our job, going, right? well, certain people weren't there. And I could just tell that he was trying to not pay us some money. Look, li listen, I've been doing this for a long time, and we've gotten f***ed over by a lot of people. That's not true. If you want on, I'm going to conference in Kelly. We did the job. Yes. Hi. Of course, when a designer tries to not pay us money, it's totally pisses me off because I'm, I already did the job and was being really shady about it. Okay, Nicholas, here's, I'm going to make this real easy for you. You pay us the money. No, 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 I'm still speaking. You pay us the money that you owe us and we'll take you to court. Okay, bye. We're keeping your images. Bye. Hang up. Don't give him his images. I mean, he's a liar. He had amazing press there. He had Surface there. He had GQ. He had the Wall Street Journal. And now you're going to sit there and be like, well, I don't like the press that we got. Well, guess what? You offended everybody that was there with your sense of self-importance. And that's why we have a rule that we get paid before, because that's what fashion designers do sometimes. They stiff people. So prepare a small I'm, claims case. I knew this, this was going to happen. Yeah, this is why we always have to get paid. I know. That's why I asked for a deposit. Nicholas Petru, he's an idiot. You know how far he's going to go in the fashion industry? Like, not as far as my pinky. Nicholas Petru is a thief. I'm putting it on my Facebook page.
So whatever. I'm going to eat the money is that he owes us, and I might just tell the truth about him, that he's, he steals money from companies. That's what he does. And don't think that the PR companies, that we don't all talk to each other and figure out who's taking who over. We do. N-O-C-H-O-L-A-S. No, H. Oh, let's spell his name wrong. <laughs> For fashion show, we came to the Soho Grand, and we were just kind of, you know, hoping that this was going to be a good fit. We're going we're gonna to build walls there. It'll be good for we're just trying to figure out if we can afford to build walls. That's what our big thing is. We have a budgetary constraint, so that part of the stress, too. I mean, it's easy to find other places, but we had to work with a certain amount. We're thinking about it as a flat front of the bucket tour, a flat here. With a logo. With a logo on it. Something really cheap. 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 We were going to do it in the lobby area. It was going to be very salon style, and we wouldn't have had to spend too much on decor, which would have cost a lot of extra money in the production. And hopefully, the client is happy. Perfect. We're cleared to get our credentials. Do you know how to print these labels now? I can do that. It's fine. Okay, you guys back here need to pick up the pace. Hi. It's night before the Ajahn Provocateur show. And luckily, we were able to cast and find the models. And so right now, we're working on just all of the details of the show. So we have a lot to do, and there's only so much time. I just need to get back to them just because they're on deadline. We organize really everything that goes into doing a show, from picking the music to back of house production to front of house to seating. All right, let's go. We're going to do this uh, seating chart now. Come on. Let's go. It's not your job. It's my job. I'm not yelling at myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not yelling at you. Jessica Morris is the International Director of Communications and Marketing for Agent Provocateur, and she lives and breathes Agent Provocateur. Okay, so I'm going to put my Women's Wear Daily writer here. What are we going to do with these VIP customers? Well, they need to have good seats. Yeah. And obviously, WWD and all those people need to have best seats there, but it's 11 o'clock, and we still haven't got anyone who's making that room look nice. Did we get candles? Um, we still got to go through music. We've also got a couple of bird cages, Chinese bird cages. Jessica can be very brutal. But when you are selling a brand, that's what you have to be. You have to be the brand. And that's what she's doing there. But we don't have enough money for this. And that's the secret of the fashion business is very few people have money. And when they do, they don't like to part with it. So everybody in fashion is trying to get a really big bang for their buck. And now more than ever. Can I just say one thing? Everybody needs to kind of jerk ourselves yeah. into the reality that this is happening now. Like, I feel like we're missing a little sense of urgency. V, what do you have? What are you working on tonight? Tonight, I'm working on going over all of Mike's notes and fixing us the reports so we don't have to worry about them. Okay, so you're doing reports. Okay. Hi, Robin. I'm okay. Hi, hey, hon. I'll Hi, see you man. tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Have an interesting evening. I love what I do. I love working at People's Revolution. I'm really, really happy here. But there are a lot of hard things about our job. We had a crazy week at work. Oh my god. My work time overlaps a lot with my personal time because we're just working crazy hours and it's hard to stay in touch with family and I don't get to see my family that much. The new girl, Stephanie V, she's doing an okay job, but she's never worked fashion week before and she keeps making so many mistakes that have been like, like I'm starting to go crazy. And today I was, I'm trying not to be mean to her, but it's like, I'm just, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, she's, it's hard when you come to work at People's Revolution. I mean, there's a lot of things that you have to figure out and sort of navigate. And the way that we work, there's like no method to the madness. You have to sort of just jump in and figure it out. And Stephanie Voorhees was not necessarily catching on to the position that well. This job is about thoroughness and, and communication. And if you're at it, like, you've got a huge problem. All the things that you just described should not be anything that you have to train any <laughs> okay, exactly. That's that's my point. I can only accept so many mistakes. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I guess it's going to be like sink or swim this week. It is a unique type of person I can handle this. And I've been doing it for 12 years. And you have to be tough sometimes with people in, in this industry. You have to assume authority because if you don't, people will walk all over you. It's hard for anyone to understand that it's not an easy job to do. I'm just getting rid of everything wrong. There's no lighting, there's no candles, there's like all this stuff just plonked in the middle of the room. Where's Kelly? I need to try.
please stop with the gun. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that in a fence. Okay, it's fine. I'm gonna get the gun. Sorry. It's just really annoying. I can't take the gun smacking. It's rude. I just can't. Two. I can't believe this is what we're doing. Your first day of school looking for shoes. Or just flying around the house while I look for you. <laughs> Ava's going to school again. The years are like this. Blank, blank, blank. My daughter's now seven and she's going into second grade. I'm a butterfly! <laughs> I found it! I found it! Oh my god. She's scared me to death. 18 months to seven years old. I've never missed anything that she's done. Mommy's doing an Ajahn Provocateur show today. Today? Yeah. I've never missed one school event, one parents' night, one day of school because I was going to be at a fashion show. I just, I just wouldn't let her do that. We are leaving for your first day of second grade. The first day of school is always the same kind of fashion week. All the other parents are coming in their like trench coats and their venture capitalists, all the lawyers and the investment bankers. It's school time. <laughs> then when I come in, like. <laughs> Wearing all black for three hours sleep. Can you give me a pose? Second grade pose. Give it to me. Yay for Ava. Sorry, girls. Yeah, Kim, can you get him into the right arrangement again now? Okay, if it, can, if it needs now to go. Yeah, Kim, take that. I'm gonna go help them. Today is the day of the Ashley Provocateur show. We were just kind of dealing with setup. I worked really hard, and so I just want everything to be perfect. Um, that's the, this one, guys, that's the smaller one. The big thing goes in the big cage, and in this case, the head or the arm or whatever it's got. Yeah? Whenever you're doing an event and you're on kind of a time crunch, you go stressful. We were dealing with the lighting and dealing with all, you know, event logistics for that day, making seat assignments and dealing with hair and makeup. You know, everyone's always more high strung the day of an event and they just want everything to be perfect. There's no check-in table set up down there. I know, which No, we're not doing that. We're moving that to up here. Yes. Everything's completely wrong. We didn't have any fabric till two minutes ago. We've got no candle lights. We didn't even have any lights in the whole room. This is the only light we had in the whole bloody room. They were supposed Not to be lighting. Not one light in the no, whole but they were room. supposed to be lighting back there. That's all no, we had. No, none. None. I'm just getting the... An hour before the show that I've discussed bird cages, lighting. Good with all these things. No, I know. It's I understand what anyone's like to argue about how the show is going to look. So when that one moves, that one turns around. Like, you know, all these tables in the middle of the one way, all these puffs in the middle of the table. Can you do those for extra seats? Yeah, that's fine. You don't have to vote. What we have to do is look at the room and say, is this the best way for them to be? We've got these stools in the middle of the runway. Who's going to move all this furniture? Where's Kelly? Aren't she coming? There's no charm involved. There's no lighting. There's no candles. There's like all this stuff just clunked in the middle of the room. And I'm like, well, what are these? Are people sitting there? If you turn it this way, no one can sit here. No, no, no. You have to move it all. Yeah. Oh, you're moving it all. Your opinion. Where's Kelly? I need to try. Hello? Do you mind coming here? What? Are you okay? She needs something in her hands. Now, what about the mask? Let's put a mask on her. Maybe we can move and give it a bit more space, make it sit better. Like, this is ridiculous here. The arranging and things like that. Jess just wants your opinion on a few things. But I'm on my way there. And then give her a cocktail. Okay. All right, bye. Oh. Should be doing check in. I'd like somebody downstairs at the front from people's rest. Probably yes. yes. Have you ever done check in before? Kelly, I can help with check in when I grow, grab that. Okay. You can both be the greeters, actually. And if anybody's rude to you, do not say anything back to them. Do not roll your eyes. And if you have to cry, go outside. Okay? Okay. <laughs> you guys, here's the deal. You need to move back. Tim, we have three palms, right? They're the music. They're not. They're Tim banana and Ellie's tree. Oh, well, they have to go. Okay. So I've been talking about bird cages, palms, right. candles. The thing is, is that clients, you know, they're in labor. They're in the middle of birthing this collection. They're in the middle of bringing it, you know? I have a banana tree. So they're going to have to go. And I got up lights for those, but they're just going to have to go. Come, come, come down. Okay, okay, we can help. We can help. It's your job as a leader to try to say, okay, how can we get to the solution? Can you get somebody to touch it up while you're doing it? A lot of this is ritual. It's it's like animal mating. You know that an hour and a half before the client's going to start to go, Wah! like they just do it, you know? It's 346. Bobby wants the show to start on time. Wait, wait, so 
about the show. Signal to me. Hi. Digital time music right up. I got it. I love doing fashion shows. It's one of my favorite things to do. Everybody ready? No, we don't have five minutes, and I don't know who told you that. Right before the show's about to start, and the room is full and the energy feels right, you'll feel this calm. You know, it's like when you see a surfer just out on his board, and then all of a sudden you see him look, and then they're up on the board, and it's like, shoo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the U.S. premiere of Argent Provocateur's new Kinky Couture collection, Argent Provocateur Soiree. I think that people don't realize that fashion is such a celebration of beauty and femininity. If God drew a picture of the derriere and put it in the dictionary, it would be next to these girls. Your husband's going to go crazy when he sees this captain. When you see a young woman who's that beautiful and that flawless, just really enjoying the fact that she is a knockout and having a great time with it, it is beautiful. Here we go. Time for the finale. Have a great time. Flirt, flirt, flirt. Journal, so I think Jess was very happy. That is really the key in doing any of the events or shows is that the client is happy. So it was, you know, successful. This show was amazing. Do you love it? Thank you. Come over here. You have to do some television interviews, okay? The general consensus is that people love the collection and WWD and V Magazine, Style.com, and they've all come over. So I think it was amazing. We loved the way you presented it. We think the clothes are unbelievable. Kelly was brilliant. She was fantastic. I'm just going to grab. Anytime that we go into a show and it looks great and we got good reviews, I feel like a winner. What? Did we make money for this show? No. It just looks cool and sexy and chic. Your aura banter. Yeah, that's really brilliant. incredible. That's so much fun. It was a good meeting. Nice way to wake up, right? Well, You're well, awesome. Well. Thanks, babe. We haven't been doing anything. I have been doing plenty of things. Oh. Go away. Right now. I mean, right now. done with Nicholas Petru and Asian Provocateur show. We can move on to the next thing. We still have many, many things on our plate. Why is this? The discs are still burning when I asked you to do this first thing. Because I didn't realize we had CDs. I was looking for them in the back. And in other words, you messed up again. I didn't mess up. I didn't know we Yes, you did. That. I'm just trying to get it done. It doesn't take all day long to burn some discs. It's been... How come you're not working on the invite? Because. What do you mean? I'm trying to figure out if these labels. I don't want to ask questions. What are you doing right now, though? You're not even what am I doing, doing right now? I'm trying to do this deep. I'm not talking about the interns. I'm talking about you. That's fine. Can I tell you how many times I've stuck? I'm not, I'm not sealed, stamped, and Emily. labeled invites and sent them out. Emily, I'm not above doing invites. I'm just but saying. You I'm, haven't been doing anything. Yes, I have been doing plenty of things. I'm just about it. I thought I had this. I'll just do it right now. It's fine. Holy. I'm going to have a serious meltdown right now. Like, Emily, I could not take it anymore. I just. I, I was so pissed off. You know, what are you really doing other than assigning something to an intern? We've got to get her out of here. She's absolutely making everything worse. Like, I still haven't sent them out. I, I'm, I just, I can't. Go and, and go away. Go and do the stamps and the invite somewhere. Right now, I mean right now. Everyone thinks I'm not doing anything, and I'm, and I am. That's not the case. I just feel very overwhelmed that I'm trying to get through it. And when basically when I'm getting called incompetent, it's because her ass is on the line and she needs a scapegoat. You know. It's just sometimes I don't think they realize how long things take if they want them done right. I don't want to quit without a fight. So I'm doing what I can.
next one on Kel on Earth. At the end of the day, like, it's not getting done. Why isn't she just doing all this stuff for you? Doing this. No one should be out till, like, 7 in the morning or whatever it was. You know, I made a bad decision. I think we misjudged your experience. You should have been hired as an assistant. Robin, Emily, and I, we all go to London for the 25th anniversary of London Fashion Week as consultants for the British Fashion Council. They're wearing lace, boxer shorts. <laughs> Yeah, no, this isn't the right seat, but you probably knew that, yeah? We did invite and look after the American presses, which is what we have the right to do. Go to the second row. This is not your seat. Now. With senior staff in London, we are all at, like, breaking point. I'm literally going to have a flinging bag. There's no way that you can do this. His bronzer's running off his face. This is my daughter's father. Hi. Hi. Let's face it. I mean, Ilario is ridiculously handsome. We get the charming <laughs> European daddy. Uh -huh. <laughs> they thought something magical was going to happen. For more information about Kel on Earth, visit bravotv.com.